Howdy folks, welcome to lesson 7 of the CompTIA Network Plus course. As you can see, today we're going to be talking about fiber optic cabling types and connectors. Now if you're going to be physically connecting things in an environment, and if you're not going to be using copper cables to do it, then you're probably going to be making use of something called fiber optic cable. All right, folks, before we jump into this lesson, you know what to do at this point. Give this video a like. Maybe consider subscribing if you're not part of this family yet. And now that I've got that out of the way, let's go learn about fiber optic cables. Now these cables folks are often used as the backbone in networks, in other words the main cable, and they're also normally favored in environments where there tends to be high interference. So if you don't know what interference is, that would be things like EMI, that kind of stuff. Now unlike copper cables guys, fiber optic cables are actually immune to interferences because they work with something called light, where copper cables work with electrical signals, so they differ day and night. Now folks, the fact that fiber optic cables works with light instead of electrical signals, it actually also means someone won't be able to listen in on your digital traffic, so fiber optic cables are also actually more secure than copper cables. Who would have thought, right? Now one of the great benefits of fiber optic cables, you know, besides them being more secure and all that, is these cables are used over much longer distances compared to your normal copper cables because the signal does not degrade as much. It's light we're talking about here after all, folks. All right, and then when it comes to the different types of fiber optic cable you actually get, yes, you get different types. There are two types you guys need to be aware of at this point in time. The first is called multi-mode fiber, and the second is called single-mode fiber. So if you ever find yourself installing fiber somewhere or just generally working with it, you'll be using one of these two I've just mentioned. Now as for multi-mode fiber, starting with that one, we normally use this for connecting things indoors, guys. This one can go up to two kilometers. Hopefully you know how that long that is. If you don't know how far that is, you might have to go and convert it because this is a metric system. So it can go up to two kilometers and is most commonly found in places like a server room. It is obviously not limited to server rooms, but that is generally where you guys are going to find these. Now fiber optic cable is generally a lot faster than Ethernet cable guys, which is why it is the preferred cable to go and use in server rooms for linking various equipment together. Things like your switches and that kinds of stuff. Now all the equipment will be able to communicate with each other at much faster speeds than what they normally would if you were to go and use Ethernet cables. Now getting to the single mode optical fiber, this bad boy guys is generally used outdoors and it can go for much longer distances which is up to a hundred kilometers sometimes. I mean that is flipping crazy. This is what we normally use to link things over long distances at great speeds guys. Now, unlike Ethernet cables, folks, which are generally going to be using the same type of connector, uh, fiber optic cables don't all use the same connector type. So let's maybe have a quick peek at the various kinds of fiber optic connector types you get. The first one on my list here, guys, is straight tip. It is also known as ST for short. Normally, we just call it ST. Chances are, if you're going to be writing the N plus exam, they might, they might also just refer to it as ST in the exams. You need to know what the abbreviation mean, guys. The second one on the list is subscriber connector, which is known as SC for short. And the 10 to 1 going to probably refer to it as SC in the exam. And then we have local connector, which is called LC for short. And that's probably what they're going to be calling it in the exam. Lastly, guys, we have mechanical transfer registered drag. Now that's not really something we, we have a short abbreviation for, but that is the name for it nonetheless. Now with regards to the first one on the list here guys, being straight tip. Here is a picture for you guys in case you have never seen one of these connectors, you know, just in case. Now the straight tip connectors are a quick release bayonet style connector. They are used most commonly in fiber optic networking applications 
and they can be used with both short distance applications and long line applications, guys. These ST connectors are cylindrical and um, with a twist little lock coupling. It's normally about 2.5 millimeters keyed ferrule. You know, that's how it looks. And they have a bayonet mount and a long cylindrical ferrule to hold the fiber. Now, I'm really hoping I'm not butchering these names because like I said in other videos, I'm not actually English. So I'm doing my best to pronounce these words to you guys. So I'm also going to be putting them on the screen as much as I possibly can. Now, be aware though, they're spring loaded, these connectors, guys. So you just must make sure they are seated properly. The benefit though is these are usually very easily inserted and also very easily removed. So that's a benefit to these little connectors. All right, folks, and then with the second connector here on the list being subscriber connector, or should I say SC, like before, here's a picture for you guys for reference. Now the subscriber connector, guys, is a fiber optic connector with a push-pull latching mechanism that provides quick insertion and removal while also ensuring a positive connection. Pretty neat, right? The subscriber connector is also available in duplex configuration, in case you guys didn't know. It has a benefit in keyed duplex capability to support both sent and receive channels. And this connector is also commonly used for most modern network applications. Although that might have slightly changed now, but generally that was. So the subscriber connector is a snap-in connector that is extensively used in single mode systems for its remarkable efficiency, guys. And this connector is also very inexpensive. It is trouble free and it is very robust. They give you precise positioning via their ceramic ferrules and the square snapping connector latches with a simple push pull motion and it's also keyed. So that makes your life a lot easier, wouldn't you guys say? Now, looking at our list of connectors again, let's have a bit of a peek at the third one on the list here, which was local connector or LC for short. Now, like usual, guys, here are some picks for you. Okay, let me move these picks out of the way a bit and make some room for information. So first of all, guys, the LC does not actually just stand for one thing. So we know it stands for local connector, but it actually also, believe it or not, stands for loosened connector and little connector. So the LC can actually stand for multiple things. I suppose it probably comes down to preference in the, the day, but I'll be honest, I've never actually heard someone say loosened connector or little connector. All IT people I've worked with over the years just normally call it LC, and in some rare cases, they might call it the local connector, but generally people just refer to this as LC in the industry. Now folks, this LC connector features a 1.25 millimeter zirconia ferrule in a small form factor fiber optic connector housing with a snag free latch, which gives an audible click upon engaging for reliable and high density connections. So as soon as you go and you know push it in, you're gonna hear a little bit of a click. It's kind of like a normal LAN cable connector. In some cases, you'll actually hear it click, and then you know, okay, great, it's in. You know, it's quite difficult when you're trying to shove a connector in somewhere and you're not really sure if it's in or not. You kind of find yourself doubting yourself sometimes. But if you can hear a click, then you know, great, it's in. Alrighty, and then back to our list of fiber connectors, guys. Let's have a peek at the last one on here on the list, which was mechanical transfer register jack. Wowza, try saying that three times fast. Now, the same as before, let's add a peek for you guys. Okay, so first of all, these connectors are usually called MT dash rj for short so if you really want a shorter abbreviation or something for it you can call it that you know you can either go and call it that big name which you're gonna really struggle to say three times fast or you can go just call it an mt dash rg for short much shorter name wouldn't you guys say now this fiber connector type folks is very efficient it is high density and it is low cost now guys interestingly enough the design of this connector is actually very close to that of the RJ45 connector used in Ethernet network. So maybe you want to go and check that out. However, this connector is smaller in size and subsequently lower in cost. It is slightly smaller than a standard phone jack and it is very easy to connect and it's also very easy to disconnect. I mean, whenever, whenever it's easy or 
whenever it's easy to disconnect or connect, I'm just a big fan of it. I don't know about you guys. I love hearing the words easy. I love hearing the words that it's cheap. Anything like that is music to my ears. I don't know about you guys. Now, compared to all the types of fiber optic cable connectors, guys, this one offers lower termination costs, because we just said that, and greater density for cable management hardware. All right, everyone, so all in all, you'd be wise to invest some time and to invest some money in fiber optic networks is what I'm saying. Generally, these networks and cables are better in most aspects. You know, the only thing that I can say about them is sometimes fiber optic cables cost more in general, but if you can afford to get them, definitely do so. I suppose it might come down what it, you can afford to install these cables, the equipment and all that. But if you can at all afford it, definitely worth the effort, guys. Okay, that, folks, is fiber optic cables, types, and connectors in a nutshell. So if you'd like to know more about this topic, please feel free to drop your questions in the comment section down below. If you've got any questions, I will gladly answer them. Or you can just go check out my Discord server, which is in the video description. Now guys, just a special shout out and thank you to all the guys that support the channel. So if you guys would like to do that as well, so I can keep making videos like this, please check out the information in the video description down below. So if you've been clicking on the thanks button below the video, if it's available in your country, thank you very much, guys. For those of you that's buying me coffee or milkshake, thank you, you're awesome. And then to all the Patreons, guys, thank you very much. If you are a Patreon of mine and your name is not on the list, then uh, just check if I have not sent you a message on Patreon. You know, that's obviously for the paid Patreons. You get free Patreon ship and you can also get paid ones. For the guys that are paying for Patreon, um, I probably would have sent you a message and um, you just need to go check your inbox on Patreon. I would normally ask you first if you want to be in the video and if so, what name you want to have displayed in the videos. So if you don't want to be displayed in the videos, I won't display you. And um, if you do want to be displayed in the videos, you just need to reply to my message to let me know what you want to be displayed as. Anyway, guys, thank you to the Patreon guys. Thank you to all the guys that's making PayPal donations, some big, some small, but it does support the channel nonetheless. It does support me. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate all, right, all of you guys. And like I said before, we do have a Discord server channel, or I have a Discord server channel. The link is the last link in the video description down below. All right, folks, I hope you learned something. I will see you in lesson eight of the CompTIA Network Plus course.